Morning, everyone. So this morning, I'm on a short hike in the Southern Adirondacks, going to a place called Cod Pond. I've been here once before. Actually, made the trip and accidentally forgot to bring my water, which I left in the car. So, and of course, it was one of the hottest days. By the time I got back to the car, I was extremely dehydrated. Um, and it's, it's only about a mile walk into the pond. So just a lesson learned. Try to remember to bring your water with you, which I did today. So the temperatures this morning are around 70 degrees. It's a beautiful, sunny, sunny morning. And today, I'm looking to use my tilt shift lens. So I reached, recently watched a video on YouTube and I've had this 24 millimeter tilt shift lens for quite a while. I don't use it very often just because it's pretty heavy for a lens, but I want to show how to utilize the tilt shift lens for landscape photography and how it's useful in getting full depth of field from front to back without having to do focus stacking and without having to use a very small aperture with a wide angle lens in order to get everything acceptably sharp. So hopefully you'll, get, you'll learn something from this so we'll be back on as soon as we get to our location. So a lot of things have changed on this trail since I've been here last. Looks like a lot of blowdown. Got a big, huge pine, it looks like here. Got another pine here that was knocked over by the wind, it looks like. Most of them are rotted. And a birch tree, maybe a silver birch. But uh, yeah, these, these weren't here the last time I was here on the trail. So it looks like, looks like some changes here on the trail. Hopefully DEC uh, will plan on coming down and cleaning up some of this, but we can just barely see the trail 
or the pond through the woods here. So we should be at our destination here shortly. Here at Cod Pond, and uh, there's not much from a composition perspective, in my opinion. A lot of gray in the sky, which obviously is being reflected off the water. The chances of getting a decent exposure of anything worth taking a photo of is going to be kind of difficult here, I think. So, beautiful spot. I'm just going to enjoy my time here. Grab a snack, I think, and take a look around. And then I think what we'll do is we'll backtrack back to the trailhead uh, sign in and we'll do another eight tenths of a mile uh, east to Stewart Creek. So be right back with you. What's surprising is I don't see any waterfowl here. I don't see any loons, ducks, geese, anything. Just a lot of lily pads and lilies, dragonflies, damselflies, a lot of songbirds, but no waterfowl. There's a heron. Right on cue. you guys were wondering so I normally shoot my videos with a DJI action camera it's just lighter weight easier for me to get into some remote areas without having to carry a whole lot of bulk and I've attached a strap to an, an easy detached strap to my camera bag that allows me to put my DJI action on the on the strap while I'm walking so you guys can get first person views of what I'm seeing as I'm walking through the woods I hope that uh, there's not a whole lot of bouncing that occurs with it But uh, just wanted to show you the rig setup as to how I do my videos as I'm walking on trails to give you a first, first person view.
So here we are at Stewart Creek. Pretty spot. Now I just need to figure out what my composition is going to be. But we'll walk around, see what happens as far as finding a composition. I'm thinking that this might be a good one here with the rocks and the focus on the water. That's another good spot with the cascades. I just don't know which one's going to be the best for demonstrating tilt shift. So I may have to change, change my thoughts here as to what I'm trying to capture, but I'll bring you back on as soon as I figure it out. Some more wild blueberries. It's awesome. I'll have a little snack here. But as I was looking for more blueberries, wild raspberries. <laughs> so that's awesome. These don't look quite ripe yet, although I don't know. Not coming off the vine very easy. Let's check down here. There we go. Well, that didn't quite work as expected. So instead, I'm going to show you the Stewart Creek photo that I took using the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And then I'm going to show you the tilt shift lens in action on a different day in the same general area where I had set the tilt shift lens up properly and the results came out a lot better. So here you go. Enjoy. So I found a composition that I want to shoot with the waterfalls in the background, but I also want to shoot this rock slab as well as the boulders in the front to be able to keep everything in focus by using the tilt shift lens. So I'm gonna show you in a minute how to set up the tilt shift lens initially so that you're in focus from mid ground to background and then how we'll use the tilt to get everything in focus from the closest boulder on the wall all the way back to the waterfalls. So I'll be right back. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the tilt shift functionality of this lens to be able to get these rocks here in my composition in focus all the way back to the waterfalls in the background. I'm shooting at f5 so technically I shouldn't be able to do that with a normal lens unless I do focus stacking. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my tilt shift lens. Now, what I have to do, and hopefully you can see this, is I'm setting up my tilt functionality here so that the lens tilts this way toward the wall. So by doing that, I'll be able to get everything in focus using the tilt shift lens. So the first thing I have to do is I need to, and we'll, we'll set up the, the initial focus point, which should be right dead in the center. We'll zoom in, ensure everything is sharp. That's tack sharp there. And we'll check the background. Everything looks sharp there. 
But now if we look at these rocks over here and we zoom in, they're blurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tilt shift functionality on the top here, and I'm gonna tilt my lens this direction. Just until it comes into focus. I'm just turning the knob back and forth here until everything looks sharp. And now, when I zoom back out, we can check in the center. Everything is still in sharp focus. And we'll check the background. Everything's still in sharp focus. So I'll take the bracketed shots, combine them, and I'll show them to you here.